have to be saved and God want them to be saved so God have what prepare a room or uh, like give them a space for them to repent and come to him and anytime one repent anytime one accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior God is what willing to what welcome them with open arms so very very important and um, let's pray Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We give you adoration, magnify your holy name. We thank you so much for the Lord that you are done for us. That we bless your holy name. That I continue to pray that everyone that is hearing us, everyone that is watching us, everyone that will watch this video, even after the program, Lord, bless them, enlarge their authority, open the heart of their understanding for them to work. If they don't know you, they will accept you willingly as their Lord and personal Savior. If they know you, I pray that I will encourage them for them to draw closer to you more and more. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Again, we thank God. And always I like to start um, by showing some uh, pictures or uh, photos of like ancient Egypt with their pharaohs and the people. So um, I will show the picture number one, then we'll move on. Show them on one the screen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we can see one on the screen. It's all about the color that the pharaoh being dark, but the fascia and his hairstyle, you can see that indeed this pharaoh wasn't a white man, but a, a black uh, man. So that confirmed what we started by teaching that indeed back in the days of biblical time, Egypt. It's not like a uh, white skin tone, but all the Egyptians were dark, very dark skin tone or black. It doesn't matter the shade of um, their skin tone. So we can see a pharaoh, um, I think, photo his arm or whatever it is, but you can see what them with their hairstyle and all that. So very, very important that ancient uh, Egypt or Bibrika, um Egypt, those people are dark, like the Hamed, the December, the <coughs> descendants of Ham, they are all dark. Africans are the descendants of Ham. Very, very important. Including um, Canaanite and uh, Kushite, which is uh, Ethiopia, Egypt, Libya, including uh, Sudan. They are all the descendants of Ham. So, very, very important. <coughs> Sorry, my, my voice is a little scratchy. Okay, we'll go to the next picture. Um, the picture number two. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we have another one. Again, uh, Pharaoh with the hairstyle. I don't know whether it's braid or whatever it is. And those people love jewelry too. Uh, like the, whatever is in his neck or his chest. Uh, chest is not um, a garment, but it looks like different bees putting together like jewel. You can see the different layers and different color and the different design. So um, pretty. Pharaohs, um, whether... They are like the uh, queens or the kings. They love to dress with um, gold or ornaments, like putting all this jewelry on them. Again, you can see the appearance or the, the picture on the screen that indeed this pharaoh wasn't a white man, but indeed a black man. It's all the color, but the facial expression, you can see through the ears, the chin, and the nose, and the forehead, and everything. And the this confirm that the uh, Egyptians were they weren't um like white people but indeed they were all black very very important um for us to see okay so I'll go to the next one then yeah okay thank you yeah another one is this uh you can see like men dressing white garments holding stuff like it's like they have to sell in the um, house of the pharaoh with their uh, bonnets or ha uh, hats with feathers on top and they have ear rings uh, time and time I think we tend to come across this um, dressing with the ear rings I think I said it before but I, I, I will do it again when you go to the book of e uh, Exodus let's see something book of Exodus chapter A book of Exodus, sorry, Exodus chapter 32, 
from 2 to 3. And Aaron said unto them, Bring off, uh, Break off the gold earrings which are in your ears. You are in your years of your wife, years of your wives, and of your sons and of your daughters. Bring them, them unto me. This is what Aaron, uh, Aaron is saying. The earrings that God earrings that in your sons, your daughters, and your wife's ears. Bring them unto me. Verse three. And all the people break off the ear, uh, God earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Okay, this story was a time when the children of Israel left uh, Egypt and they went to the wilderness and God called Moses to come to the uh, mountain and like have one and one encounter with God. And the children of Israel decided that indeed the Lord God, um, Moses is delaying whatever he's doing with the Lord God is, is nothing that they want to like get involved so they want to have their own god so they forced aaron to do um like make a god for them or aaron have to what, lead them to have a different god then that god will lead them then uh aaron decided okay i think i can't hold on with this um like pressure that those people are giving him so he told them to what bring break off your earrings from their uh, ears their wives, their children, and um, daughters and sons. So that tells us that indeed those areas, I mean, those times, like maybe they have a lot of gold. So um, the um, Egyptian love wearing earrings and uh, Israel to love wearing earrings. Or maybe the men, Israelis men that are serving in the house of Pharaoh, they have to wear earrings to identify that they are slaves. I'm not sure. I did search, but I couldn't find that. By indeed, um, the words of uh, fear, um, Aaron in the Bible. So I would take the word of uh, God as Aaron instructed them that indeed they have to bring their earrings for what them to for Aaron to make um, what the God for them to uh, to worship or for them to serve. So that is the reason why I believe the Israelites were men and women daughters and sons were wearing earrings so that's the picture we are seeing on the screen that indeed the uh hebrews were earrings serving in the house of pharaoh with their garment long garment different type holding something in their hands with the food that they have to serve different food so very very important and here we all can see that indeed the children of israel was in like different skin to like white but indeed they are uh, people of color blacks and skin tone so very very important okay i have the last picture then i'm done with the pictures i love showing these things that indeed that will confirm whatever we are doing to confirm that indeed the children of israel were blacks egypt um were black now we know like ethiopia and other they are dark skin so i don't like to dig into those too much but this will help us okay i find this picture uh you can see uh, a man like in the one of the tomb like trying to like scrape these tombs are maybe six thousand years five thousand years four thousand years so they have a lot of moles in the wall so you can see him holding like small brush and uh, scraping the uh, moles on the wall to like the pictures or the um the arts on the walls to show clearly and the man there it's an Egyptian woman. Um, uh, sorry, Egyptian man. I said the other day on one of the video that they have black Egyptians still living in Egypt. They are in the south. Like people that have color or the white uh, skin tone, they are like more of north. But the darker Egyptians are the south, very south of Egypt. So uh, there's another confirmation that uh, it's still the Egyptians are darker skin tone if you go closer to one of them and you ask them you interview them they don't care about it uh they don't do race but they will let you know their forefathers maybe to 500 years to uh 5000 years live in this village live in this land land and they do there. that may they come from there but the people like the um first skin tone which is the like and the arabs that are fair 
or white they will, if you ask them they will tell you that their forefathers came from um maybe kuwait or they came from here they will let you know but still now they are egyptian so you can um, understand it and know that indeed oh so that means the darker skin tone people are from the land of uh egypt they are from africa so very very important for us to know this and understand it okay let's move on yeah we are doing the salvation as uh, salvation is for the children of israel or the hebrews the lord wants them to be saved no matter what anyone thinks the lord god wants them to, to, to be saved when you go to the book of isaiah isaiah chapter 45 verse 17 and i read it but I, uh, Israel shall be saved in the Lord. It's not, they shall be saved. It's not like they shall be saved outside. Like anyone can find a Buddhist says I'm saved. Anyone can find any God says I'm saved. No. The word of God tells us clearly in the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. When they are saved indeed, they are saved no turning back they are not going back ye shall not be what ashamed nor nor disgrace forever and ever when you are saved you are saved you won't be ashamed anymore you won't be disgraced anymore there is assurance the lord god is giving to his children the hebrew israelites very very important that we have to be saved we have to uh Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Salvation is for the Israelites. Salvation is for the Hebrews. So if the Lord is telling us that indeed the West Africans are the Hebrews or the Israelites, that means it's not he's telling us for fun, but he's telling us to come back to the Lord. He's telling us to reject whatever gods that our forefathers are worshipping. He's telling us for us to deny all this bad thing. That it won't take us to anywhere. It's like whatever our forefathers are worshipping. Or maybe we are worshipping now in secret. It's just selling your soul to the devil. A lot of times you may think that. Oh I, I won't shy away from this um, don't trade. Because uh, if I do that my, my grandfather will be mad. Or my grandmother will be mad. Or my great grandfather will be mad. They are not there. You don't know where their soul is. Any idol that you are worshipping, this idol will lead you to what? Hell. You are selling yourself, your soul to the devil. So God is calling us to come back. Very, very important. So uh, today I will do a lot of reading. But again, to confirm that indeed, the salvation is for Israel, salvation is for the Hebrews. The Lord God wants us to be saved. Very, very important. Okay, let's go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 1, sorry. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 through 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 through 8. And being assembled, and being assembled together with them, commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Wait, said he, ye have what? Heard of him. Ye, ye have heard of me. Ye have heard of me. Ye have heard of me. For John, uh, for John thoroughly baptized with water, but Ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence, like not many, many days left. This is the, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ was telling the uh, children of um, his disciples that indeed they have to wait here for the um, coming of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit will come upon them before they will go out and preach the gospel and be what um we uh, win souls for the kingdom of god and the lord jesus christ said again john baptized with the water but like my disciples or like 
anyone that follow me will baptize with the Holy Spirit. So that's the difference. Okay. That, and um, the six, when they therefore were coming together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, when they at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel, this is the question, D and that, because the King James, this is the question the children of uh, um, the disciple asked Christ, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Uh, the Lord have co co commissioned them or just encourage them that indeed command them that you guys have to wait till the um, Holy Spirit come upon you before you guys can go out and do the work. So as they are working, they are working together. They are coming. The uh, word of God tells us, us clearly in the book of Acts chapter 1 from um, 4. They asked Jesus Christ, when will the kingdom of what or kingdom of what Israel be restored. They were worried that indeed that kingdom have to be restored. So when Lord, then the seven, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the father had what put in his own power. Then the eight. It's not for them. Seven is not for anyone to know the time or the season that the Lord God, the Father, have put into his, his own power. Then the eight. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the world. Okay, so this is what the Lord is telling them. Do not worry about uh, when the kingdom will be restored. But the people have to receive Christ first. The people have to be safe first. Like now, if that moment um, the Lord God restore the kingdom for them, they are still they are not safe. Their heart is far from God. They are worshipping idol. They are worshipping Ba. Who will do... Um, the time of the uh, Hebrews, where, or the time when they were in the land, what they did, how they worshipped idols time and time. And God had was here. Yeah, God was so sad mm -hmm. that they, they um, he refused to serve, uh, serve him or they refused to listen to God. So the Lord Jesus Christ was telling them, this is not the time for anyone, for uh, you to know. Only that God know. He have his own power. That he owned that power. And again, that time, the reason why the disciples were asking this question, um, Israel doesn't own themselves. Like they were ruled by someone else or some kingdom, which is Romans. The Romans were ruling, um, like ruler over them. So Israel doesn't have their own king or their own president, nothing. They are, though they live in their own land, but they are slaves. That makes sense. They dwell in their own land by then. The time Christ came, but still, they are slaves. They don't have say in anything that the Roman government will do. So, I think that add up to um, this. That's the reason why maybe the disciple asks, Lord, when are they going to, God is going to restore the kingdom of Israel to us? But Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ said, no. No one has to worry about this. It's up to the Father. No one knows, but it's up to the Father. But first, go ye, therefore, and preach the gospel to the world. Jerusalem, you go to Jerusalem and preach the gospel to Judea and to Samaria before you go outside. Okay, so this confirms the words or the topic that we have today that indeed Israel have to be saved. The Hebrews have to, to be saved. Salvation is for the Israelites and salvation is for the uh, hebrews is the same thing anyway so very very important let's go to the book of um romans chapter 9 let's see romans chapter 9 what the lord is saying there or the word of god is saying the romans chapter 9 let's see romans chapter 9 romans chapter 9 okay romans chapter 9 we we'll read 1 to 5 Romans chapter 9, 1 through 5. This is what Paul is saying. I say 
the truth. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My uh, counselor also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have what great uh, heaviness and what counsel um, sorrow in uh, sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself will what I, I stand from uh, Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. This is what Paul is saying. Like his heart is so heavy. He wished that even it, it, simply like he wished that he, he is not a, a child of God. Because of what he saved all right, but his uh, people are not saved. So he, his heart yearned. Like any man of God or any woman of God from any country that um, you know your people are not saved. And you know you have tasted uh, the word of God. You taste that how sweet the Lord God is. So your heart, you, I mean, your heart desire will be like your family will be saved, like your descendants will be saved, saved uh, your your nation will be saved. You you have that uh, heart desire or that heart um, yell that indeed I wish, I wish, I wish that those people will be saved. That's what Paul is saying. So therefore, he said, "Who are Israelis?" So as my uh, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to flesh. So. This not spiritual thing. He is saying that according to the flesh, that my my brother, my uh, flesh will be your sister and your brother in the Lord. But he is saying that according to the flesh, that me the uh, the Hebrews, are, they are not believers now. So according to the flesh, to describe that it's not the church, it's not the Christian, it's not the believers that uh, let's say Gentile become a believer. This verse or whatever Paul is saying. Is them no? That's the reason Paul went and said, "My my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh." Very very important for us to know. So this time Paul is speaking to, or Paul is talking to the uh, the Israelites, and indeed the four he said, "Who are the Israelites? To whom pertain the adoption, and the uh, glory, and the covenant, and the gift." And the giving of the law and the uh, service of God. They, ha they are the ones who have to serve the Lord. And what? The promise. And indeed this promise and this uh, covenant and uh, this glory and the law. The Lord God gave it to what? The children of Israel. The five. He said, who are the father and of whom as what? Council of the uh, fresh, of the fresh Christ came, who is all who is over all. God bless for everyone. Amen. So through them, it's not a spiritual one, but he said through them Christ Jesus came. This is what Paul is saying. Through the Israelites, the Lord Jesus Christ came. So if through them Christ came, they have to be what saved. They have to what. No God, they have to be the one like group or the one people that indeed they have to be saved first, but not the last. Very, very important. So this is what Paul is saying that indeed salvation is for the children of Israel, the Hebrew, they have to be saved no matter what. Very, very important. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20. 28, as chapter 28, verse 20. As chapter 28, verse 20. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see, for this cause, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that of, that for the hope of Israel, I am born with this chains. This is what Paul is saying. That indeed, a call, it's like a call for you to witness, a, a call for you to bear witness that indeed, for this cause, I'm not in chains for nothing, but I'm in chains because of Israel, for them to be saved. He would rather be in chains, he would rather be uh, like take this suffering, or take this hardship, for his people to save, to be saved. So, 
He said, I call for you. For you to what? For this call. Uh, for this cause, therefore, I have what? Call for you. To see you and what to speak to you. That indeed, because of Israel, I mean chains for Israel, because of Israel. So, let's say Paul be in chains, that will be in vain. No. The Lord will allow that to be in vain. How many years ago that the Lord Jesus Christ came to this planet? More than 2,000 years now. And now, later on, the Lord Jesus Christ will appear to Paul on the road uh, to Damascus. And God called Paul to come to like enjoy his disciple or be one of the disciples for preach uh, for him to preach the gospel to the Gentiles and to the kings and to the Israelites. Again, it's about the salvation. So the Lord God chose Paul for this special assignment or for this special mission. And Paul is what telling his uh, followers that indeed. I'm not in change for vain. That I'm in change because of the Israelites. For them to both be saved. So, if you are hearing me, being a Hebrew, um, West African Hebrew Israelite, if I'm going to sit here and say and testify that indeed our forefathers doesn't have any God, that is small God to worship. I'm lying through my teeth. Even if they don't have any God in their house, they have these uh, kings and queens and their they are, they are parent queen and their chest and all that. They pour libation on those things. They, 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 they sacrifice um, whether goat or um, lamb or um, whatever they sacrifice on, on, on that thing. Pour and pray to their gods. And God hates that. So if God is revealing to us now that indeed, we are the West African Hebrew Israelites. We are the Hebrews. We are the uh, Judeans. We are the Israelites. That means we have to turn. And when the Lord God said turn, he means turn fully. It's not like you turn and look at him and then you turn and um, look at the other side. Or why you miss. You don't miss anything. Just turn fully to the Lord God. He loves you. He cares. Whatever our forefather did, back in the days if you study old testament especially the kings from um, um first samuel second samuel especially you will see it in the kings what they did the time and time worshiping idol god was so mad trust me if you study it and you do understand it with the help of the holy spirit you will surrender to the lord you won't let anyone beg for you to what be saved you will surrender Whatever they are doing right now on the land is nothing. They did worse. And what? That anger the Lord. And that make the Lord what? Reject Israel. Reject the Hebrews. Reject his chosen people. Still, he loves us. It's like a, a parent having their children. and they, they, uh, One of their children can't listen to anything. They've been high-headed. You are a parent, all right. You love your child, all right. But you what? Make sure to punish them, for them to shun away from their wrongdoing. And you realize that oh, my father loved me, or my mom loved me. For them to come back, this is what the Lord did for our forefathers. As he he cast them out, as he what he makes sure for them to what none to remain on that land. Again, so the word of God tells us that indeed. The Lord loves us. So what? He's calling us. He's what? Revealing himself to us. To come back to him. Israel have to be saved. The Hebrews have to be saved. This is the will of the Lord. That all have to be saved. Amen. I'm not saying that uh, only uh, Israel have to be saved. And how about the Gentiles? No. I'm saying that God intend for what? Not to be lost. Especially his children. And again, be a parent. I don't think you hate your children so much that you go outside and be like, be fake and call others children and pamper them. You won't do that. No matter, you will do that, but no matter what, you know deep down, you love your children. This is how the Lord is doing. He loved the Gentile. God created everyone equally. But Israel 
or the Hebrews are the chosen of the Lord, the covenant people. The, the, the God chose them. And that's the fact. No one can change it. Uh, uh, I've had one disagreement that these people serve God. I mean, serve other God so much that there is no way they can be the children of um, Israel. That person is referring to the Ashanti people that they serve the voodoo, they serve all these things. Of course, that's the reason why they left the land. Do you think if they are serving Yah, they are serving God Almighty, God won't cast them out. But because they are serving the other gods, they are serving the uh, voodoo, they are uh, eating blood, they are doing all kind of bad things. And that anger God, that's the reason why God would uh, scatter them to the nations. So, if you see any uh, country like West Africa and you think because they are not worshipping God, they are not um, uh, doing the uh, Hebraism or they are not Christians and they are doing Pauline and all that, so there's no way they can be um, Hebrews. Uh, you have to go back to the Word of God and read the Word of God very careful. What they are doing back there or back in the days. The same thing, they are doing the same thing now. But I believe and I thank God that now is the time that the Lord is what, ringing the bell, bell in their, uh, um, our hearts and our ears that we have to repent. Very, very important. Okay, let's go on. Let's do the book of uh, Romans. Let's do the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Romans 10, verse 1. The desire of Paul. Romans 10 1. You see, um, Paul, Brad, uh, brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. This is what Paul is saying that his heart desire. And his prayer, not only the heart desire, like we have this saying that I wish, I wish. It's not only wishing. Wishing doesn't change things, but prayer changes things. So Paul had desire, his heart desire and his prayer is that indeed Israel will be saved. So there's no way you will tell me otherwise that indeed salvation, Israel doesn't need to be saved, but because God um, have cast them out. No, God have what? Uh, give them a chance or a gap for them to repent. And time and time when we read the word of God, it's not only reading it, but when we study the word of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit, again, it's clear that indeed, the Lord God wants the Hebrews to be saved, Israel to be saved, Judean, and his children to be saved. This, <laughs> this is not something that someone will say, this is a faith, it's the word of God, it's there clearly. As um, I read a minute ago, Romans chapter 10, verse 1, Paul said, My, my uh, brethren, my heart desire and my prayer to God for Israel is they may be saved. So simple. I didn't wear my glasses. That's why I was really slowly. So simple. Indeed, they have to be saved. So no matter who you are, being a West, a West African or African, the Lord God is what? Knocking on your door. That, that door is your heart. Ringing the bell. Let's surrender. Let's shine away from all this um, evil thing that we are doing. You can, a lot of people can be in the church all right. They go to church, they praise God, they do worship and do everything, but they have family members that are family members back home that they will call them and tell them bring money i'll go to i'll consult this oracle i'll consult this uh, whatever name they have there and for that person to help you <laughs> then let's take a break then the minute that indeed you having um consulting this small god small god that god the father created why do you have to go low it's better for you to go high and worship the one, the creator. He's the one who created 
everything, the universe and everyone. So, I think it will make sense for you to create the one who is superior, the one who have upper hand in on in like every situation he have upper hand. He he is. No one created him. I rather save that God than the small one. Everywhere you go, God created everything, including the devil, including the demons, including the principality and the powers of darkness. God created them. So why do I have to? So if I have choice to serve, why can't I, I, I serve the creator, the supreme being, the, 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 the creator of the, the universe? He has everything. He is. He is. But hey, other ones, they may have, they will go and steal and give it to you. But God have. He is. He created it. So he, if, 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 he, if he's like, he doesn't have enough on the warehouse, he can create more. Because remember the name is he is the creator. So I rather serve the creator than serve that one, the filthy one, the liar, the supplanter, the deceiver, which is the devil. So please, I'm pleading to my people, West Africans, let's turn and surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept him. Christ is the only way. Salvation is for you, but Christ is the only way to heaven. There's no way. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you may have different Bible. But the Bible that I study, the word of God tells me clearly that indeed salvation is for what? You and I. But Christ is the way. Christ is the narrow way. Christ is the truth. And Christ is the life. Without Christ, you don't have life. Without Christ, you don't, you don't have anything. So for you to have everything, for you to have that salvation, for you to own everything, and trust me, we agree to want everything. Christ, when we serve him, he will make the way for us to have all. When we study the word of God, none from uh, Genesis to uh, Revelation. I haven't come across a, um, any like chapter or the book or any page that indeed the word of God tells me that men of God or women of God serve God. And they were poor that indeed... Um, nothing they, they can't do anything the lord god tell me that indeed i will not beg for bread i won't beg for bread nor my descendant so serving god is achievement serving god is something that you have to be proud right now i think one verse will jump on my head like someone was saying job yeah job wasn't poor because he wasn't serving god well job was rich but the devil went to God and asked permission that Lord open the way for me to what tempt Job. That maybe if Job is what broke, he will save me instead of you. He will curse you, God. But God knowing all, oh, oh how long time and time I quite remember that I wish the Lord can testify about me like he did for Job. Have you thought of that? The Lord God knew Job. He said, No, no matter what. Job what? won't curse me. Job won't turn around. I wish the Lord God would testify about you. That's my dream and my prayer that God can stand up like or can just say boldly that I know my servant. I know my servant that no matter what, he will never turn around and serve other things. I pray that that will be your prayers. So Job wasn't poor. Time and time you can study and see. Sometimes God allowed those things to come. For testimony, for us to have testimony that indeed I went through this situation and God, God delivered me. Those things that we go to get acquire money, to get money for them to make us rich, it's temporary. Then within a short period, I realize that you are dead. You already sold, uh, sell your soul, you are dead. And when you die, trust me, you are not going to heaven. Bible says you go to hell because you already were sell your soul to the devil so salvation is for you the lord god is what knocking at your door the door is your heart for you to open up for him to come in very very important okay so let's go on i promise i have a lot of reading to do and it's all good let's do the book of us as chapter five that's chapter five Let's 
Okay. Acts chapter 5, 31. Acts chapter 5, 31. Him had God our a stand with his right hand to be a prince and a say a, a to be a prince and to save of okay sorry let me take it again him had god was ascend with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repent repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So this is what the Lord, the word of God is telling us. That indeed God what have what raised the Lord God Jesus Christ. God what have what putting him on the right side, his right side. He have raised him above everything to be a prince, to be a savior. But through him, repentance may come. Israel will be repent through the Lord Jesus Christ. Israel will be repent. So again, the Lord making a room for Israel to be repent. The Lord making a room for the Hebrews to be repent. Salvation is for them. God, the Lord God, have not cast them out or forget forgot about them. If God have cast them out, then there won't be any way God have what reveal to uh, reveal to others. Not only me. The reason why, like our uh, is this, we as our uh, ministry, we are saying. The West Africa Hebrew Israelites is like, let's say I say all Africans. And time and time, the message or the revelation is about only the West Africans. Wow, call me a liar. But I can't do that. The message is for the West Africans. Maybe right now, maybe South Africa or Central Africa or somewhere, North Africa, God what have given the same message to, for one to what share. So it's better for me to stay on my post. That's the reason why I'm like. I'm sharing or just I'm time and time mentioning that the revelation is about the West Africans. So if God have cast them out, God won't waste his time to reveal this to us for, I mean to us. And we'll have the opportunity to, to share for each and everyone to hear. Very, very important that indeed God will cast us out. And he, having made his mind to cast us out, that's the reason why. The word of God is telling us, oh, this West is already there. The Bible is how many years ago? It's written, not now. So God so loves us and he cares about us so much. Again, um, we didn't take break and I like that. I'm try I have a lot and I'm trying to cover all. If you are listening from the radio, thank you so much. God richly bless you. And if you are on YouTube too, God richly bless you. Without you guys, our uh, ministry will go on. And if you are on Facebook, Facebook, God richly bless you. Thank you so much for um, sharing the message, sharing the videos, and giving thumbs up and all that. And again, that's okay. You can disagree with the um, the message. That's fine. I like those opinions and like all that. But again, the more you dis you disagree, the more the Lord God is what knocking on your door and doing things in your heart. So we welcome all to um, do that. Very very important. Okay, so let's move on and see. Okay. Let's do Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, 30. Acts chapter 10, 34 through 36. Then Peter opened his uh, mouth and said, of, of a truth, I perceive that God is not respectable of a person. But in every nation, he that fearless, like fear him, and work righteous and walk righteously, and walk righteousness is accept with him. Anyone that fear the Lord, anyone walk righteousness in the sight of the Lord, the Lord accept him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel to preach peace by. Christ Jesus, he is the Lord of all. This is what uh, Peter is saying. That God is not uh, respectable of a person. It's not like God have chosen these people because of something. Anyone that changed their life, that is righteousness, except Jesus Christ, God have given them power to preach the gospel. But the children of Israel, 
God has ordained for them to preach the gospel. Why? Because they are the chosen people. So, ask yourself, God has chosen you. Yeah, I'm a Hebrew, I'm a Judean, I'm this, I'm this, so I have to preach. Salvation first, you have to accept Christ first. You have to accept Christ first. So this is the reason why we need to what? Turn our life around. They have this song that they say, turn, turn, we are turning around. The Hebrew Israelites, we are turning around. We are turning around, uh, surrender our, our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are turning around, uh, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very, very important for us to turn around. If God has chose us to preach the gospel to the Gentiles for them to be saved, uh, it will be um, rude and it will be bad. And it will be, it, that will be sin that indeed you polish yourself that you already uh, saved. You are already what? Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. But inwardly you know that you haven't done that. And you take a Bible, keep on preaching. Trust me, the devil will mess with you. Because he knows you are lying through your teeth. So please, salvation is very, very important. We need to what? Accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Sorry that I'm rushing, but I don't want the time to get here. Then I'm so on the same message. Okay, let's do the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1, 11 through 16. And this tells us clearly that the Lord God cares about his chosen one so much. And, um, the day I was studying this, I saw it. I said, wow, uh, I thank God. And that made me proud. Okay, let's see. Luke chapter 1, 11 through 16. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. 12. And when uh, Zachariah saw him, he was troubling, and fear fell upon him. 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zachariah, for they, their prayer is heard, like the Lord have heard your prayer. Their prayer is heard, and the wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and they shall call his name John. 14. And they shall have joy and gladness, and many shall Rejoice at his birth. 15. And he said, and he said, be great in, be, he will be great, uh, uh, for he will, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Wow. That's powerful. 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. So, <laughs> this tell me clearly that indeed, even for the from the birth of because um the birth of John the Baptist, because he baptized, so that is the name we call John the Baptist, is because of the Israel. He said, even for the children of Israel. John message will turn them to their God. By then, again, they are already far from worshiping God. By then, they don't have any, they don't want to do anything with God. God just be there, stay up there, and let us do our own thing. This is the mindset of the Israel or the Hebrews. That Lord, yeah, you brought us from the land of Egypt. You bless us um, a lot of blessing and you give us the land and like a lot of things are going on. We love all that. But indeed, to worship you is not fun. We rather worship the devil. So the word of God is telling us here. The book of Luke chapter 1, 11 through 16. Then indeed, as the angel appeared to John's father and gave him the good news as the wife Elizabeth the Lord God have heard their prayers. Elizabeth will have a child, and the child will bring joy and order. But the last one, which is the 16, through the coming of John, many of the children of Israel, John will turn their heart 
to their God. I think to me, this is a great news, a good news, very, very important. So again, not test us as time and time of giving the word of God, um, the, Bible, uh, the Bible verses and all that. None contrary tell me that, oh, the Israel are cast out and Gentiles have to be saved and the Israelites have, have to be saved. No. As the Gentiles are saving and God is saving them, Hebrew too, and the Hebrews have to be what? Be saved. And as Peter said, the Hebrews or the Israelites have to be saved and they have to go out and preach the gospel to all the world, which is the Gentiles. Very, very important. So, we have to turn our heart and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Christ is coming soon. Very soon, the trumpet will sound. And I don't know where you will be. And if you ask me, I don't want to be here. I don't want to repent after the rapture. I don't. Because by then, there won't be the grace, which is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will go together with the Lord. And the very elect. So now, Holy Spirit is here with us. But it's hard for anyone to survive. It's hard for anyone to make their own decision to serve God. But when the Holy Spirit left, you don't want, you don't have the helper. The helper that the Lord Jesus Christ promised us. You don't have that helper. So you are on your own. Please, let's have the mindset changing out of our heart right now. Before it's too late. Christ is coming soon. Let's do the last reading then. We are done. Okay. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, we are reading 10 through um, 12. When Jesus had heard it, he uh, marveled and said to them, that, that follow, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, nor, no, not in Israel. And I said unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall what sit down with abraham and isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven 12 but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the outer darkness into darkness and they shall what be weeping and drenching like of their teeth some bible say gnashing of their teeth Granting of that it very very important this is what the uh, word of God is saying the Lord Jesus Christ is saying I think last week I did on my video um, Jesus one of this uh, the Roman soldiers and centurion came to Jesus that my servant is sick so Lord pray for my servant and Jesus okay uh, let's go and the man said no I don't deserve that you come on my roof I'm in charge of my army if I, I tell them to go left or right, they'll go. Just, just I'm believing you. Just speak the word. Just speak it. That is the reason why Jesus said, I'm so marvel that indeed, I can't believe it. That I haven't seen any faith like this. That indeed, none in Israel. But I tell you, people who come from east and west, and the children of Israel, the children of the, the kingdom, the chosen people, will be cast into the utter darkness. Why are they going to be cast them into the utter darkness? Because they haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their, their, their Lord and personal Savior. So salvation is very important for the Lord, not only the preachers. Please, I pray that when you hear this message, you won't trash it out. Please, salvation is very, very important. Christ wants you to be saved. It's good to, to be a Hebrew and uh, knowing that indeed you are Hebrew or you are Israeli. It's very, very important. The children of Israel, they know themselves and they know who they are. But the Lord God has called us what, to be saved first. Very, very important. Please, please, I'm praying, I'm begging that indeed we have to surrender our law, ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. And 
our time is almost up. We have a minute. All I'm saying, st uh, stay blessed. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for watching this video. God richly bless you. Uh, Holy Hills, they have the, re um, the radio. If you want to watch through the radio, it's www.holyhillsradio.com. And if on YouTube too, it's people, cron cron, it type people, cron cron. You see all the videos, not only our uh, videos, but a lot of videos. And again, uh, on Facebook too, you can click follow on Holy Hills and you see a lot of videos, a lot of programs that go on here. So God richly bless you. Bye bye. See you next week. I worship you.